Welcome to the Relationship Room Podcast. I am your host, Elizabeth Kraus, and I am a certified life and relationship coach. If you are a woman who is ready to break unhealthy patterns, build strong and vibrant love, and become relationship conscious, then this is the podcast for you. I am so glad you're here, my friends. I'm ready to walk through those doors if you are. Now let's go. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of The Relationship Room. I am your host, Elizabeth Krause. Today, we are diving in to the next part of the toxic relationship emotional journey. And if you have no clue what I'm talking about, I encourage you to hit stop on this current episode and go to the episode below it so you can kind of get filled in on what these quote unquote steps are for this type of journey after leaving a toxic relationship. And I just want to reiterate again that it doesn't matter how long you have been out of your relationship, all of these feelings can still happen. And some of them still happen for me, even though it's been since 2013, since I left that relationship. But I want to dive into more of what these emotions are. You can feel sentimental. You can watch a movie, you can hear a song, and you can start to miss that part of your relationship that you loved. We were attracted to this person for a reason, and it's okay to feel sentimental. It doesn't make it wrong at all. You're still grieving even though you are so happy that you're not in this relationship anymore. You're grieving certain parts of your past that felt so good. So feeling sentimental and feeling all those gushy feelings It's normal. It really is because there is a part of us that still, maybe even if it's just a little inkling, still cares about that person in some sense because that was a part of your life. Even though it wasn't the healthiest, it still had its good moments. You can also be led into feeling really lonely. After you feel those sentimental feelings, you wonder, oh my gosh, there were some good times in my life. What if I'm never going to have that again? What if I'm never going to find anybody again? Is that where I am supposed to be? And you can start second guessing all of the things that and the choices that you have made by not allowing yourself to be in this relationship anymore. And that can kind of put you in this feeling of so much sadness. You're very sad. You're feeling like I miss parts of what we had. I know it wasn't healthy, but what if that's the only thing for me? And we can start to feel so depressed and down on ourselves because the feelings of loneliness and the feelings of sadness do, they really do work hand in hand. And then we can go into this feeling of fearing so fearful after we felt so sad, second guessing, even feeling sad. We wonder like, why am I feeling sad? Why am I feeling so sentimental? And then the fear creeps in. What if I do decide to go back into this relationship? What if I allow myself to put my boundaries down that I'm now trying to establish within myself? And I've told all these people that are close to me that I am no longer a part of this relationship. What if I cave? What if I go back? What if I'm not done with them yet? What if I allow myself to slip so bad that I want to reach out? I want to communicate with them. And then we end up getting back together. Is that something that I really want? And then you start to think about all the things that have happened and you almost get this flash of all of the things that did not feel good in your relationship. And then you go back to anger. You go back to anger, being angry at this person. You go back to being angry at yourself. And it's just a rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And we don't know how long we are going to be in a specific emotion or state of mind. It could be days. It could be weeks. It could even be months that you are sitting in that anger. It could be several days or weeks that you are missing this person. All of it is normal. It's still a part of your life and still a part of 
growth. You were even growing, whether you realized it or not, in this relationship. Or maybe you were realizing that the growth you were taking, and I say growth in quotes, was not somebody who you really wanted to be. So there are a lot of things that we can learn even about ourselves after we leave a relationship like this. Like, I feel like for me, that is when my healing had really started with things that I was avoiding about myself. That is when I truly was like, okay, Elizabeth, it's time. It's time to wake up. It's time to really evaluate where you are in your life, where you want to go. And honestly, right after I left, I was really numb for a while and I just sat. And I kind of didn't even have any of these emotions. I was really, really numbed out. And I was just in fight or flight. I was trying to survive. My body was trying to catch up with those actions that I took with leaving. Because being in that for so long, it's like we automatically just like, we can't catch up and we want to go back. And all of these things in our lives that have happened leading us up to where we are currently. I mean, we can just be numb for a little while and be numb. It's okay. Your body will know when you are ready to move past and move into those emotions. And you're not going to maybe start with feeling so good and feeling so confident and yeah, F you and I feel so good. You may go straight to feeling sentimental. You may go straight to anger. And your journey is yours. It's yours. So I invite you, no matter where you are in your journey of this emotion around leaving this toxic relationship, invite it in. Say, hello. Thank you for being here. Thank you for reminding me that I am human. And I invite you to just really, really Envelop the emotion, befriend the emotion, sit with it, get curious, ask yourself questions as to maybe why you're feeling the way that you do. Journaling about it. If you want to anger write about some things when you feel that ickiness within your body and that rage within your body, there are so many things that we can do to work with all of these emotions that we have in this process of healing. So that, my friends, is part two of the toxic relationship emotional journey. And that's just, again, something that I created just looking back on the things that happened to me on my journey. And I hope you really find it helpful just in normalizing that the emotions that you're feeling right now, hey, I see you. I see you. And we need to talk about our emotions a lot more because it's a big deal. But I still want to congratulate you for no longer allowing yourself to be in a position in a relationship that does not feel good. And if you still need and you feel like you want more support around these emotions that are you're feeling, I really invite you to reach out to me and connect with me. I would love to be your cheerleader and seeing you throughout this time in your life. You can find me on Instagram at I am Elizabeth Krause. Or you can email me at connect at elizabethkraus.life and all of those things will be in the show notes. If you love what you're hearing and this really hit home for you, please share this with somebody who really needs to feel like these emotions are normalized for them as well. Because it's all about sharing what's going on because that is the ripple effect of what is going to make us feel better as a collective. So thank you so much for being here with me today. And until next time, I will see you in the next relationship room. 